tonight we have true ghost stories from geriatric to pediatric and everywhere in between. Plus a ghost that likes to yell, Yoo-hoo! We are telling the best ghost stories by nurses. They're the best because they're true. Well, hello, my spooky friends. I don't know in my last video if you saw the, my little kitty. I haven't done the editing yet, but in case you can't see her, right beside me up here, I have a new little baby. She's totally solid black, so I don't know if she's showing up on this video or not. But if she is, her name is Sachi. So, everybody say hello to Sachi. Okay, are you ready for some great ghost stories? Well, let's go. I used to work in a nursing home where all lights have motion sensors to save energy. It was around 2 a.m. when the clock in front of the station started to go all frantic. I looked at it and thought it must be cheap crap. I kept writing my care plans. Note that the station is facing two corridors on either side forming a V pattern and right in front of the desk is the elevator. A few seconds after the clock frenzy, my peripheral vision caught the lights on the right hallway started to turn on one by one nearer to the nurse's station. When all of the lights were on, the other hallway lights started to turn on one by one. I was frozen in my seat, waiting. Not sure what for, now all lights are on. There's no one, just me and my junior on the other wing. Still waiting. Beep! All lights turn off, even the computers apart from one patient's monitor, which was beeping loudly. Fight or flight mode. I can feel myself running towards the patient's room thinking I should be running out of the building. Got to the patient's room. The patient had flatlined. Not for resuscitation, so there was nothing I could do but to compose myself and attend to the patient. Still not sure, up until today, how I managed to go through that night. Okay, so when I was reading this one, I thought, you know, I was going to put it all down to faulty lights, you know, a, a power surge, whatever. You know, it was strange for lights to come on one by one, but... You know, I was like, okay, that could happen. You know, I, yes, cheap equipment, <laughs> I'm used to that. So I was not on board with this story until she went into the patient's room, who was a DNR, a do not resuscitate, and the patient was, you know, gone. So that, um, yeah, that made me think, okay, that was that spirit leaving. Um I don't know. I hope I know. Like, how do they know so early in the game how to turn out lights? But yeah, that was creepy. And that is what made me a believer in that story. This one's kind of long, but there's a lot of stories in this post. Just wanted to share a few experiences I've had or witnessed. I worked night shift at a nursing home that used to be an orphanage. I had at least three people all tell me, different times throughout the years to tell those kids to stop poking me with that stick. Those residents died about a week later. We had reports of the same little boy with a black and white striped shirt who would go into the residents' rooms. One lady used to sit in her chair, my cat's going nuts, <laughs> and talk to him. We could, She could see him. She slept in her chair a few times so he could have the bed. Aw. Had a balloon floating straight dead center in the middle of the hallway beside a resident's room. I pulled it to the side and secured the ribbon behind the handrail. Later that night, it floated on its own out from the railing and in an unusual pattern into the resident's room. Beside her bed, then to the bathroom over the toilet, then back beside her. Creepy, I'll say. Had a lady who would say the man in black was there. At the same time she'd say this, someone would pass away. Multiple times. 
There was a room that some said they could see a demon face reflection in the window. Doors would shut on their own. Girl, I think you just need to get out of there. I saw a ghost of a man once who looked real to me, but disappeared when the elevator door was open. After he went in, I found out later that the man I saw matched the description of a resident that had bled out in his room a few years prior. Another nurse saw the ghost of a man in an old steel mill uniform go into the room with his dying wife. Twice. I went in the room shortly afterwards and got goosebumps. It was also hard to breathe in there. She died soon after. The nurse that saw him was in the room with me after the resident was gone and we saw a newspaper article on the wall and his picture was there. Verified, it was her husband. Some people claim to have heard footsteps behind them in one hall. I now work night shift at a pediatric nursing facility for fragile children that used to be a school. I was upstairs in the lunchroom, completely alone. Upstairs was only used for storage, training, and lunch, so not a single person on the entire level. I was about to reach the stairwell door to go back downstairs. A little cheerful child's voice close to me said, Hi. Freaked me out. I pretended not to notice and walked down the stairs. Someone said the suction machine in one of the rooms turned on by itself. So creepy. And 100% true. Uh, yeah, the high, <laughs> the high voices. And I have heard, yeah, I have heard things. I've seen things. Um, but voices, they just freak me out. So um, I would have, I would have been out uh, at the kid's voice. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Uh, what about you? Would you have been freaked out at that? So let's go on. I worked at a hundred-year-old facility for mentally and physically disabled. The first story. I went to the bathroom as I was sitting on the commode. The bathroom became cold. You could see your breath cold. Then the paper towel dispenser started rolling out paper towels. Then a serious chill went through me. I'm sitting there, pants down, and wasn't about to leave. So I said, really? While I'm trying to pee? It was gone as fast as it started. Let me tell you, these ghosts, they don't have boundaries. Second story, same place. I would go into work early. One morning, I walked down my hall. I could hear weeping coming from one of the offices. All offices are locked that time of morning. I listened for a minute. Then I got my keys out. As soon as I jingled my keys, the weeping stopped. Yeah, that's sad. That's really a sad one. Let me tell you my bathroom story. Same thing. This cottage, Evelyn Cottage, just, you know, haunted as it can be. And one day, I was, went in the bathroom, same situation. You're sitting there, all vulnerable. Well, my cabinets in front of me are very old, and I don't know how to explain this lock. It's kind of like one part, you have to push it into two pieces that go this way. So, it kind of it's almost like a mini lock, but it doesn't need a key. You have to really pull it open, um, which isn't always helpful when you need to grab the toilet paper. But anyway, I'm sitting there one day, and I had not been nowhere by the cabinets. Cabinet doors are closed, and in this vulnerable position, my cabinet door, I heard the pop first of, of the little lock, and my door flies open. Well, you know, I wasn't really scared. I was angry. And I said, really? Are you kidding me? And I was like, look, boundaries. You need to learn boundaries. Um, yeah, that's a totally true story, not related to nursing, but this house. So, girl, I get you. Okay, let's go on. I was a new nurse working in a long-term care. It was near the end of my 3 to 11 shift, and I had a resident fall. Paperwork City. Boy, do I know that. And tons of new orders to take off. I was frantically doing paperwork at the nurse's station when I heard a cheerful voice say, 
Yoo-hoo! I looked up, saw a lady with straight black hair and dark glasses waving at me. I smiled and waved back and looked down at my paperwork. Then I thought for a second. The lady in that bed has white curly hair and doesn't wear glasses. I shook my head and looked back up. Sure enough, it was the lady that belonged in that bed. I was a bit rattled and a co-worker noticed. I asked her if there was ever a resident in that bed that had dark glasses and straight black hair. She nodded. Yeah, she died like five years ago, though. Her name was Lydia, and she was always saying, Yoo-hoo! Well, I guess Lydia is there to stay. Um, so what do you think about that? I mean, yeah, it's a little freaky, but it's kind of cute. Lydia was just being herself, and I guess having a good time. Um, so tell me what you think of these stories. And please, if you have a story, whether you are in healthcare or not, I would love to hear it. You can either comment your story below and I'll feature it on another video, or you can email me at avalincottage at gmail.com and I will try to get that on for you. Just looking for true stories. So that is going to be the end of this episode, but remember I will upload on Wednesdays and Fridays, and in the meantime, Y'all stay spooky.